Hello, this is Sam from Sound on Sound magazine. I'm at the Superbooth show in Berlin. And I'm very pleased to be joined by Aaron from Freakport. Hello, Aaron. Hi, how is it going? Yeah. It's going well. And Freakport is a new name to me, so tell us a little about the company. So we're an Australian Danish company, uh, and we're actually launching our first product here at Superbooth. And uh, we'll tell you about it shortly. And uh, yeah, it's exciting to be here. Yeah, now what's immediately intriguing about this product of yours is it's a hybrid product. It's in some ways a digital product, but it's also actually got valves in it. So what, what's the thinking here? What we're trying to do is combine what's awesome about analog and what's awesome about digital in one whole universe. So what's awesome to us about the plugins is the recall, just being able to load a plug-in every time on a track, the flexibility, the recall, all of that side of things. What's awesome about analog is the sound, the warmth, the extra dimension you get to the sound with analog. So we've developed a, uh, not only a single product, but a whole architecture that allows that to happen just by loading a plug-in. It's an analog signal path. So you've, invent, you've developed what are literally analog plugins. That's right. That's what we call them, analog plugins, and uh, that's our, our business model and our, our product range is based on that. So when you insert the software plugin onto a track in a DAW, yep. what effectively happens behind the scenes is that your audio signal is routed out through D to A converters into the analog circuitry back through converters again and it's this all takes place kind of invisibly to the user. You're absolutely right and the whole concept is we want it to be super uh, invisible to the person who's using this product all of that technical stuff that's going on underneath it uh, because you know analog while it's awesome is you know there's cables you have to plug in what if you want to make the song uh, change it like six months down the track you got to recable up again remember where all the knobs are all of that sort of thing we want to make all of that complexity invisible so that we've designed the whole uh, architecture around making it easy. Just load the plug-in, the actual routing of analog, all done behind the scenes automatically. Now one thing that I'm curious about is I'm a big fan of the MOOC DSP APB16 which does the same concept, yep. but they're using Thunderbolt to do it. And of yep. course Thunderbolt permits multiple devices to be used at the same time. Yep. You're doing this somehow using USB, yep. so you've somehow made it possible for people to have a USB audio interface and this additional USB audio device working in the background. That's right. Uh, can you tell me how you've done that? <laughs> uh, all I can really say is that we've spent a long time developing, uh, it's all about synchronizing the audio through that in a glitch-free, uh, low latency, um, bit perfect way and we've just developed uh, algorithms and technology to do that and that's really the core of what we've developed here. And presumably that doesn't just allow you to use this in conjunction with an audio interface, it also means that it's expandable and scalable. That's right, so you can uh, plug in, we haven't tested the limits yet, but you can plug in multiple units to the computer uh, and run multiple in parallel. Wow, so tell us a little bit about this first product, which is, uh, as we said, a valve processor. It's, yep. Is it basically just designed for a sort of warming up signal? Is that the plan? Uh, we, yes, really it's about bringing analog tubes into your digital workstation, however you want to use them. And we've designed this system such that it can be used for mastering engineers. We've actually got an analog dry path within the, the hardware, as well as the tube uh, signal path. And you can analog mix within this between those two paths. So, for example, mastering, you might want to just add a little bit of saturation on the highs with the, the main audio, and you can do that within this, um, all in the analog domain. Um, for people who want some, some more severe kind of effects, we've got an overdrive circuitry, so you can really push these tubes to get a more distorted sound as well. So we've tried to cater and design the architecture around both of those use cases. And for even more versatility, you're actually offering a choice of tube types. That's right. So we're, we've got the benefit because of it is a multi-instance hardware. So what that means is the, the four tubes that are in here, we can run uh, in different instances of the software. And we thought, well, why have all four tubes the same? Why not offer the option of different uh, characteristics of the audio? So we've actually got... Um, two different types of tubes within this, so you can select which one you want for a, a softer, gentler saturation or a harder, higher gain tube for some pushing it a bit more. 
I mean, does the inherent sort of variability of, of valves kind of undermine this controllability a, lot, a bit? Are they, because no two valves are ever quite the same. Yeah, that's a great thing to have in this. Uh, that gives it part of the character and the analog character is having that variability. I would be disappointed if we didn't have that variability. Um, and in some ways, uh, you know, it's you can compensate for that in, in, uh, in how you do your mixing. Um, but yeah, the variability is a great thing to have and it gives character to, to the sound. And it's not just a sound making box, it's also a control box by the looks of it, because you've got knobs on the front. Yep. And that, does that offer full control over all the parameters? Yeah, so essentially, uh, the analog parameters that are in here are all controllable and we thought well we don't really want to have it so that people are fixed to just control the, the one function so we've made it fully flexible so you can actually assign which analog functions you want to control uh, within the unit. And those knob movements, will they record into your DAW yeah. as automation data? That's right. So this is the, the digital part of it which, is, which we wanted to be able to give customers that amazing flexibility of automating all of those parameters seamlessly as you would a normal plugin, but it's really controlling the analog. Wow. So this is the Freak Tube. It's on display for the first time ever here at Superbooth. How far away from release is it? So we're, well, we're uh, taking pre-orders now, but we're shipping uh, in August. Um, and, it's, you know, and then we're, that's, that's our ship date. And that will be Mac OS and Windows? Or? Yes, that's right. Wow, and do you have a price in mind? Uh, we've got a special price at the moment, which we can't guarantee is going to remain, of 7.99 euros. Uh, and yeah, that's for this, uh, the first shipment. Wow, well, I'm seriously impressed by what you've achieved there, and I look forward to getting my hands on one and putting it through its paces. Uh, I'm hoping you might give us a quick demo in a minute, uh, but in the meantime, yeah, thanks ever so much, Aaron, really great to meet you. Thank you, likewise. Have a good show. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so what we're showing here is, um, this is just Cubase running on a Mac Mini at the moment. Um, we're running two instances of the plugin here. So uh, this instance is using uh, the E83CC tubes. This instance is running the 1287 tubes. Uh, and if we wanted to, we could have, have four instances running, each one running one tube each. Of course, one tube means mono. In this case, we wanted to demonstrate two stereo channels at one time. Uh, we've set up the um, simple assigning of, of what these knobs do to uh, the parameters and uh, yeah really it's just a matter of playing around with what's been assigned. Um, we've got a mode instead of doing a help menu where you have to read and understand everything we've got a, a, an eye here which we call it that shows the pathing that's going on in the analog world so you can see here we've got the two paths, one of the dry uh, signalling which you can enable a filter if you'd like and one the wet which we call the wet signal which is going through the tubes uh, and they get analogue mixed at the end. Um, so. Uh, one, one unique thing as well that we've got is a harmonics control. So. Uh, We've got uh, analog circuitry in there which allows us to adjust the amount of even and odd harmonics mix. So we can even automate that um, if we need to as well. Um, yeah, essentially allowing you to have control over what your harmonic content is. Uh, so you, here you can see me controlling two different instances at once. So we've also got full preset manager. When you save this into your door, next time you open the song, uh, you're going to have the same setup. So rather than having to re-cable, know where all the knob positions are on your old analog gear, uh, this will be total recall. So you'll be able to have the same sound again uh, when you open your project next time. So it's one of the key uh, challenges we want to overcome with this technology.